strong man. <laughs> Next on R. Sinclair. Do you feel the burn, everyone? Ooh, welcome to a fun edition of R. Sinclair. I'm your good buddy, your good pal, and a man with the 24 inch buttons, Amigo Aaron. Joined this week by everyone's favorite beach dwelling 90 pound weakling. I give you the brand. I also have a 24 inch python. His name is Irby. You really? Are you keeping him in a box somewhere? <laughs> Not he a, lived in the house for a while. I believe we you. didn't know it. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. So it's another round on the ZX Spectre with R. Sinclair, Brent. We're very excited this week. I'm particularly excited about this. And I'm not going to lie. When I saw the committee pick this one, I was I was pleased because this week we're going to be looking at Jeff Cape's strong man, strong man. Do you have to pose when you say strong Every time. man? Every time. Now you know. Uh, Believe it or not, I actually had seen uh, Jeff Cage. Once I started digging into this thing, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was huge. He was huge on the scene. Oh, you knew? Yeah, so you know who yeah. Jeff Cage were. Not, you know, oddly enough, I didn't notice him uh -huh. from the box art. But when I actually oh, looked well. up the, the man himself, I was like, oh, yeah, I've seen him. Now, did you, those uh, strongman competitions, which are neat, because that's one of the few things the whole world has in common. Thank God, we got something. They sort of bring the world together, the old strong man. All right. Well, do you do when you were a younger man, or even when you weren't young? Was that something you were you were into? Yeah, yeah. Uh, into no. Yeah. But I, anytime I saw him, one I would watch him. Yeah. Uh, when I was a little kid, this is another thing they would show on the uh, ABC Wild World of Sports. Yep. This is way before ESPN Thirty would show it overnight in marathons, and I would watch these things. And what was neat about them is, is like. One of the things that got me into them originally was because there was a lot of wrestlers that were did the strongman competitions and did well, including uh, Ken Patera, uh, Bill Kazmaier. Uh, they both did it. I saw uh, just watched one today that had superstar Billy Graham in it. So these are these are yeah. Well, Billy Graham was a big star, but these are pretty good sized stars in wrestling that would also do the strongman stuff. And of course. Later on, you had guys like Mark Henry that would get involved. But yeah, when they, that's it, who I was thinking of. When they evolved. But in the old days, uh, uh, in the 70s, uh, in the early 80s, when these things came around, it was great because you'd tune in and you'd get these guys from all over the world. They'd represent all their various countries. And they would all uh, come together and they would do these events to determine who the strongest man was. Now, originally, they would just show all the events in a day, and probably filmed over a series of movies. Yeah, yeah, they didn't do all the events yeah. in a day, but they they showed them all back to back. Right, and then you would, but you would get sort of like the uh, they would sort of give you the high highlights. Reel. Yeah, they they wouldn't show the bottom. They would usually show the top of, of who won the event. They showed him doing his thing and one or two of the favorites. Yeah, and then they would, and uh, you would get these, uh, and it was fun. But eventually. Uh, Someone took and would they they would shoot the whole event. And they would just cut them up and they would show them over a series of like a month or whatever. Yeah. So you could see about everything out of those. Uh, when I was younger, the events were it was a lot more crazy stuff they used to do. Uh, the uh, it's funny I was watching today uh, to prep for the show. I was watching the 1980 uh, strongman competition and uh, Bill Kazmaier won this. Bill Kazmaier went on. Went on to be a, a a very not that good wrestler, but he was a great strong man. Uh, and one of the competitors, was, uh, the aforementioned superstar Billy Graham, who was the former world champion, did the WWF. Uh, but this is when he'd cut his hair, he had a mustache, he was doing like a karate gimmick. But I'd actually seen him uh, live uh, right around, you know, maybe two or three years after this thing was filmed. And Jeff Capes is also in there. He was injured in the 1980 uh, World Championship, so he didn't get to do as well as he probably would have. But they would do stuff in the 70s and 80s, early 80s, that they'd stop doing. One of the things I remember they used to do was the refrigerator run, where they would, and they did it in the 1980 one, but they would put a refrigerator on a guy's back and a stand, and they'd have to run as fast as they could across the finish line because it was a timed event. Yeah. And I watched, uh, uh, one year I watched an episode where a guy, I think he was a, uh, I think it was Spanish. Uh, he was running with this thing, and his legs snapped. 
I mean, right there on the, it was snapped. He was laying there, and the, they were prying the fridge off of him, and the guy had the biggest smile on his face. And they're like, are you, you know, I think his name was like Francisco or something. They're like, you okay? He goes, he goes, oh, he goes, I believe. He goes, no, I'm fine. He, and they're like, it looks like your leg's broken. And the guy was a doctor. And he goes, what? Well, he goes, yes, I believe the fever has been split in two. He's like, this will require several years, uh, years, several months of recovery. He's like, how do you feel? He's like, well, he goes, I'm an intense pain. But I'm a, he was the most amiable guy that had ever broken his leg like that. But they did all kinds of crazy events. Stuff, I mean, and a lot of the stuff they still do, uh, you know, the old pick up the barrel thing, the big, uh, uh, the big stone balls was one that came into play after a while. They'd have tug of wars. They would have uh, throwing stuff over top of other stuff. Uh, the one I watched today, they had a bit. This was a popular event where they'd stack a bunch of hot chicks on a, on a platform. And they'd have to lift them. Yeah. You know, and this was great as a, as a little kid because you really felt like you were seeing like, Men that were beyond mortal men do these incredible feats. And one of the things I liked about it is when you think of strong men, you think these big, like, Herculean, like, studs. But a lot of these guys were, like, big, tubby power lifters, which I was like, hey, I'm kind of tubby. Maybe I could be the strongest man. <laughs> Didn't make it. Uh, we actually have a strong man from Charleston that competed. Yep. I did pretty well, and we actually Fifth hosted. sixth place, yeah. We also hosted the strong man competition yep. one time in Charleston. So it has came around here. What do you remember from back in those, watching those things back when you were younger? Well, it, like you said, uh, back in the day, they did a lot more flashy events. It was a lot more uh, uh, pull a train, and it was it was all so exaggerated. It made it fun. Now that's not to say it's not fun now, because they still do a lot of exaggerated events. I the most the one I couldn't watch because it made me too nervous as a kid is where they take the weight. And they throw it by, uh, overhand oh, yeah. up above themselves, trying to clear the wall. Yeah. And if it didn't make it over the wall, it came creaming back down into their face. Yeah. I couldn't watch it. It made me too nervous. That was, that was a good event. Uh, as the 80s wore on, you had a guy come out named Magnus Mon Magnuson, who was like the King Dong yeah. in the strongman competition. He, was, he ruled the roost for a while. Uh, but that's not to say, I'm not taking anything away from our today's subject, Jeff Case. No, he won plenty. I want to go into a little bit of his backstory here, but before we get sure. to the game proper, uh, Caves is born in uh, 49 uh, and uh, was active in uh, strongman competitions from 1970 to 1989. That's a heck of a run. That is. Uh, this guy started his career as an Olympic level shot putter. Yep. And let me tell you something, brother. This guy could throw the ball. Yeah. Uh, just to go over a few of his accolades. He was European Indoor Champion in 1974 and 76 and finished in second place in 75, 77, 79, 78. So he, this guy uh, uh, was a heck of a shot putter. He won the Commonwealth Games twice in 74 and 78. That's a long stretch to, get, to go. You know, that shows you he kept at it. Uh, and then he moved into the strongman thing. Uh, he won the strongman in 83 and 85. He was the world's strongest man. Yep. He was the world's strongman challenge champion in 87. He was the world muscle power classic champion in 87. And he was Europe's strongest man three times, 80, 82, and 84. And that's no easy task because there's a lot of, well, like we said, some, probably some of your premier strongman came out of Europe at that time. Absolutely. So that puts him right there at the upper echelon. Uh, having having watched him uh, in a couple competitions, one of the things I liked about Capes is like he's a nice everyman, a, like a funny guy. Yeah, he was. Yeah, uh, he was a ham, and he was all man because and like I was watching 1980, he he was injured. He went in mauled, and the guy went in and still competed and was doing quite well until. But I mean, there were some events he just couldn't pull off. At the end of it, when he lost, finally he was in it till the end, where he lost in the tug of war to Bill Kazmaier. He did, and they they jockeyed for position for quite a while before he finally just ran out of gas. He did mention that while Bill was stronger, he was far more handsome, which I, <laughs> which I thought was funny. And one thing I liked about the other strong man, like the, they were all buddies. Like there was yeah. no like rivals. No, I'd say him and Kazmaier were pretty what you would call rivals, but. In actuality, they were rivals on the field. Yeah. Rivals on the field. So I, I always, I think that was uh, kind of neat. Uh, he was also a big player in the Highland Games. So this guy, like, like I said, he he did a lot of stuff. And if you watch, if you watch the strongman 
stuff. I mean, you have to be proficient in a lot of different muscle groups, and there's a lot of athleticism to it that a lot of the big power guys just can't do. So to win as much as he did, he did pretty well. So I didn't. This is the part of him that I didn't know. Uh, um, after he retired, like I didn't realize what a big star he was. Like he was a pretty big star in Europe, and, yeah. and anywhere strongman competitions were held, people knew who he was. Uh, he also had clothing lines. He made TV appearances. Get this, uh, he was the and I had to look up what this meant. He Capes is the most capped British male athlete of all time, receiving sixty seven international caps. And earning 35 wins, that caps is like uh, going abroad and competing. You get a cap. I, I'm not going to get into the whole, uh, the whole uh, meaning of it. In 1983, he was voted Britain's best ever field athlete. That's, uh, come on. That's something right there. I mean, that, that's a pretty long line of people that could have won that. Um, Caves 1980 British records for Shoppage still stand, which is quite, quite impressive. Uh, and uh, according to the wiki, He's a household name in every home in the UK. Now, that may or may not be true. I'd be interested if anybody... Probably not as much now as if, then. But. If everyone in the checks, we got a lot of people in the UK. If you guys, if you would uh, say that Jeff was a household name in 2024, I'd be interested in knowing that. Uh, get this. Just to show you how strong he was. His, he was bench pressing 661 pounds. He was squatting 836 pounds and deadlifting straight up a thousand pounds from a height of 18 inches that's a month those are those are in the upper echelon of power yeah so when you're a big super duper mega strong stud like that you know what they got to do it's time for them to break out the game all right not to mention think about it and this occurred to me as i was writing this up jeff case was voted the world the uk's greatest field athlete in 1983, okay? Again, it's you look at it now, you're like, oh. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, at 1983, that was a heck of a title to receive. Sure. So you've got to merchandise this guy. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's you, where the real money in the sports life is made. And so, lo, it came to pass, as Jeff Capes' strongman uh, was programmed and made, uh, this game was had multiple releases. Uh, Amstrad, the ZX, this uh, came out in 85. The C64 and the BBC Micro and the Electron got this in 86. So this is only a couple years after he won the, was the, voted on that. So you, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, what does surprise me is the developer of uh, Jeff Kate Strongman, uh, Software Communications Limited, you may recall them from their big hit, Samantha Fox, Strip Poker. But they did some other stuff, too. I'm glad they didn't mix those two games they did up. Some, they did some secondary titles, including Fury, uh, Zoids, uh, Gisbert's Castle. And this was published by, uh, well, in the UK, by Meritech Games. Uh, Meritech did, did uh, a Nigel Manson game, Vixen. They also published Samantha Fox, Zoids, Jungle Trouble. So they, they, they had their hand in the pie. And eventually, when this went into the budget range, Ricochet stepped in to take care of that. Uh, this was uh, authored by John K. Wilson. Wilson, uh, who whose other claims to fame were Mega Apocalypse, which <laughs> he should get start writing on the sequel. Um, Red Scorpion, Armageddon Man. This guy was one track mine. The Planets, Their Finest Hour, which uh, we played. Tower of Evil and Worm Attack. Uh, the uh, as far as I could tell, the actual like loading visual, the big picture of uh, yeah. Jeff was done by Ian uh, McCardle, who did art for Vixen, uh, Planets, Red Scorpion, Eddie Kids Jump Challenge, which hopefully we'll play that someday, Catch Twenty Two, and Brian Jack's Challenge as well. There's a lot of challenges that we have <laughs> that we have yet to take on. I love these sorts of games though, because you you I, like I got to learn a lot, so I'm always it's always a good time. Uh, Dave Dew also worked on this game. He worked on Gyroscope, Myth, Nemesis, Slain, Tarzan, The Fury, and War. Uh, this was a 48K joint, complete with tunage, and sold a rich... Questionable, weird tunage at that. I don't know. I thought the tunage was pretty spot on. Uh, the, pr the price for this was £7.95 fee, uh, which is a good, it's a it's good a mid. Cheap price. It's a mid. There, yeah. and it supported mo uh, all of the normal interfaces. So... 
This game comes up and hones in the view. I'm going to let you talk for a while. What did you think of this when it popped up in your face? This was an odd game. <laughs> um, you, it, it has your standard options. You can play with the joystick. You can play with uh, two, you know, your types of keyboards, all that good stuff. And the first thing you do is train your eight body parts. And yeah. to do that, you don't actually play a mini game. You just you say it has pictures of your calves and your thighs and your ankles and your hands and your shoulders and your arms and your forearms and your neck. That's nine. So one of those is wrong. Anyway, and then you just click a button and it adds strength to that part of your body. Well, that you could do it that way. You know, that's not how you have. Here's how I did it. And which is the correct way. First thing I did was hit the left and or hit with wag, waggled like a maniac to build up my strength meter. You see, and then you got two choices once you build up your strength meter. Okay, you could hit the button, yeah, and it would just equal and give you out all the strength. No, yeah, it, it puts that, it into that's the... for geeks. That's not the way I did it. If you go over, you can assign. Yeah, the that's what I mean. Yeah. Right, you, but, I know, but there, if you hit the button, it just does it for well, you. It's it, my point. Yeah. It, but it makes a difference. It makes a big difference. When you select a body part, though, and, you it, it adds. It, right. It adds to that part of your but body. If you just hit it, if you just hit the button, it'll just add an equal. Yes. Everything. Yeah. So did you not? Did Wag yeah. get it fired up? Yeah. Okay. But I mean, you don't have to do that either. Technically, what do you mean? You got to get you got to get more it, jack, right? But it gives you a fair amount. I do like just by default. I like the idea that you uh, that you have to work out the, in preparation. Yeah, it's a very realistic simulation. Well, no, yeah, where they, no, because it's just like ah, I want larger thighs. There you go. Let's talk about the screen that you start off with, and you and you dwell on this screen where you've got the eight body parts. What a weird thing that is. You've got a big picture of like a foot, a chest, shoulders with no head. This is an odd choice that they've made here. It was. But I mean, but I, I'm not, bad, I, I'm I not knew it, it. I knew exactly what they were trying to portray yeah. with it. So I had no problem with that. Um, once you work out, you, you strengthen up whatever parts of the body you want to do. You go into your first event, which is the car pull. It's a truck. It's a truck pull. Whatever. Well, it's, you gotta let's call it what it is. It's a truck pull. So in the car pull, you it will flash a different body part, and you have to move your little finger to select that body part and hit the button. Right. And then it some a, a small amount of time will pass, and it will highlight another one. And you have to go and click that one as well. And every time you use a body part, you will lose stamina. In that body part, and right. if you if any time you go to use a body part and it goes to zero, that's it, game over. That's true. You also have to beat a time limit, uh, so you only have so long to pull the car. I think at the first of it, you get a minute, minute and a half. And a half. Yeah. Well, that's what, almost what all of them are that are time based, and you have to uh, uh. Basically, highlight them as quickly as you can and get through it. Did you ever score more than 112 points in that event? It's funny. If I got past the event, I didn't pay attention to the score. I was oh. just happy I qualified. I always scored. I and, and I know you can get less or more depending on how fast you do it. But I always scored 112 in that event. It was I, weird. Let me ask you, because you haven't mentioned it. Did you work the uh, the the meter... For the to you know, while you're playing the game, there's also like an interest meter or whatever effort meter. Excuse me, you know I'm talking about the effort meter. You probably didn't even know this. We didn't read the docs, so no, I didn't use the effort meter at the bottom of the all. screen. There's an effort meter, and if you if you click, uh, like it was as Z and X, you can if you click those like uh, um, uh, um, if you click those like uh, rhythmic field of style. Okay. You, you, that you can move that meter now because it, it's in the docks. It's the effort meter. Now, I'll be honest with you. So what you're doing, for example, in the first event when you're pulling the car, it, with one like I played this on the keyboard. Yeah, I did as well. So with one hand, I'm using the arrow keys to move my cursor around. Okay. With the other hand, I'm tapping the button to hit the button to pick the muscle group 
while I'm using two of my fingers to build up that uh, that uh, the uh, effort meter. What did that do for you? I'm not sure. I think. Well, I know what it did on on the on the wood chopping level. It basically it slowed the it slowed the thing down. Is what it did. Well, are you but, sure that was a, a, from the effort meter or the game struggling? Yeah, like I've got the effort meter is a real. It, I mean, it's a real thing. Okay, uh, I mean, I, I don't, I, I believe you. So let me, I'm gonna, let me just, I'll read this verbatim here if I can find it here. Uh, so, just well, real here's quickly, the thing. Talk about the event. What did you think about? Uh, the so your first event is the carpool, and yeah. it, it, it's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with the event. It's a good way to get you introduced with the game. It's, it's not necessarily challenging, uh, except for a reason I'll get into later. Uh, but if you don't train properly. And the, it looks like the body part is highlighted at random. At least I didn't. I, I never found a pattern. Right. So you have to train in that f training montage. You have to train pretty much everything kind of equal. You kind of want everything a little bit equal. Uh, I was able to get past this the first time I played for real. Yeah. Because I actually knew where all the keys were. Yeah. And, um, Me too. And, and I never failed it past that. Now, I did fail at once when I didn't quite understand what everything was because the first thing I did was put everything into one body part. I, I was, <laughs> my, my leg was the size of a mountain. Yeah. And it, the, it was like, go! And it went to a body part that had that uh, was like the neck or something. I was like, tink! I was like, game over! Yeah. I was like, oh, that was fun. So <laughs> here, here's the docs. Here's what they say about the effort meter. The effort uh, being put into each event can be increased or decreased at any time by simply pressing the X or Z keys repeatedly. It is a good idea uh, to choose a start setting for the effort before each event commences. To, to start each event, press the fire button. So what it's saying is you hit the start button, you're, the event's happening, and you can hit those, you can hit those uh, effort meters, and it should make the event easier. That's the way it's built. Now, uh, uh, that's what I did. And I think, at least for this event, I think it did make it go quicker or my guy move better. But, I, again, I can't be sure. I'm just telling you, that's the docs. So, if you didn't use the effort meter. I never used the effort meter. But, right. so, uh, the next the next thing that happens after you pull the car over the finish line yeah. is you get to train some more. And the training that you didn't use up last time is still in your meter bars. So let's say you used a whole lot of thigh, but you didn't use a whole lot of hand. Well, you can not worry about training the hand so much and put more energy in the thigh. That's a fun little balancing, like, Plus make you, you think you mechanic. You get stronger as you play the game. Yeah, yeah. You, you cool. end up with more bar than you at the very beginning of the game. Um, the, I like that. However. Liked it. And plus, you can also play, theoretically, Theor and the docs also say this. Theoretically, like, for example, the next event heavily involves the shoulders and arms and back, right? Yeah. So, in theory, you could put more jack into those areas because they're going to get worn down to quicks. But, again, I, I can't say that with any sort of... That's what the docs say to do. I don't know if that's exactly how it works. Well, I, I believe that is true because I don't think I ever lost any part of my leg during the second event, which is wood chopping. Yeah. Wood chopping has a completely different style of gameplay where you have an, a, an axe head going back and forth at the top of the screen, and when you hit your button, you thrust into this incredibly large log yeah. at, at the midpoint and bottom of the screen. And you have to... You don't just chop through it all in one go. No. You, you take a small sliver out of it. Yeah, watching that and video, then, you can tell that was a machine assisted because there's a 0% chance you're going to get a perfect slice. It's not going to happen. So if you go down, you make your first cut, the axe comes back up, and it starts going back and forth again. So you have to try to line up in the previous hole you were at before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ah, 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 in Cossicle. Yeah. Uh, again, this has a minute and a half time limit. I got past this once. I got past it routinely, but it because I played this so much. I would often, <laughs> I would often fail on the log thing. And the thing is, it, you think, the, like I said, we if you just if you're watching the, along with us on the video, like this is a this piece of video that we I the one I watch too. But this is this they used the machine assisted on this. Like and they just showed the axe just every time in the same slot. That, that didn't happen. happen. No. Because the axe 
uh, is too quick. And, and sometimes you, it, when you when it comes out of the, the the part that you cut, sometimes it'll go left, sometimes it'll go right, so you can never get yeah. a good rhythm. And this is one that doing the effort meter is very difficult while you're playing this event. Like it, it because you really need to pay attention to the axe head when it comes down. But I could get through this. I had a strategy. There was one part of the log. Because I guess theoretically you're supposed to look at the because the, the docks say the log is made up of different type different hardness of wood. Sometimes you'll go right through the wood and some and it, it symbolizes. It's, yeah. We have different symbols. And so you want to try to go to pick a path where it's got the least amount of wood had to go through. But that's all crap. You need to pick a path where you think you can stop the axe yes. there repeatedly. That's the key. And then and when you do it over and over, you can you you eventually you get sort of used to it. I would end up having a two notch area where I'd be yes. close. But the thing about it is, uh, again, I think using the effort helps because it like it will make you go through the wood quicker. I think I can't guarantee it. I, I will but test I kept that. But I kept using it and, and got and got through. But the, 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 the this event was the most frustrating. Of the ones I got to yeah. play. Uh, the next event is it's the, a real event, a yeah. strong man. Yeah. The next event is the car flip. Of course, in between all the events, you get to go back and do more training. Yeah. Uh, so the next event is the car flip, which, to my understanding, is the exact same as the car pull. Uh, it will highlight a body part. You click it, and yeah, you'll you'll start moving the car a little bit more. Uh, until you eventually get it up on your side and it goes to the next event. Did did you experience anything different from that? Well, that they you, sort of. Uh, in the car, in the in the truck pull, you have you, you can get to a point where you screw up so bad you, that the car loses momentum and it just stops. It start over. And it makes it harder. This has a similar situation where if you screw up real bad, the car will just land on the bottom again. You have to start over. Yeah, but how can you screw this up? Oh, you can do it. <laughs> uh, I know. I don't think it's possible. Well, it is, and I'll go into that later. And so, but yes, yeah, so you basically this is more like the car, the truck pull. You're seeing him pull the car on the screen, and this one for a long time, he'll just be struggling, and he'll make it to the next point where the car is sort of tipped. Then the car is almost tipped. And then the car is tipped. But, I mean, you have, you're have you working your way through them by hit, do, hitting the different buttons. The yeah. actual gameplay elements, though, are click the highlighted body part. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Exa exactly. Yeah. Then you go into training, and then you have the bo the uh, the barrel load, yeah. where you're loading barrels into the back of a truck. This was a whole different affair here. This was a lot different. I didn't make it to this, so why don't you tell us about it? Okay, that? so, and this was confusing at first. I was like, what do I do? So... The first thing you've got to do is get to the barrels. So you've got to waggle your stick to get Jeff to run over the barrels. Once you get to the barrels, then he'll kind of bend over, and then you've got to go through the steps uh, where the muscle parts flash of picking up the barrel, right? And then he'll, and that will happen as he moves towards the car. And sometimes you'll drop it if you do a bad job. Eventually, he'll get over to the car or the truck. He'll drop the barrel in the truck, and then he'll run. You have to run back across to get the next one. And when you get all the barrels into the back of the truck, you've completed that range. Okay. So, but to move with the barrel again, you're just selecting body parts. Right, yeah. that. But the hard, like I said, the hard part on that one is actually uh, trying to figure out what's going on with getting to the... Yeah, the waggle to actually yeah. get over there. And that's not necessarily hard. It's just not intuitive like some of the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, then you have your training, and then you have the bell ring where you uh, basically play the big old carnival game where you take your hammer and you hit a plunger and you try to uh, uh, hit it hard enough to hit the the ball bearing into the bell. Yeah, this one I didn't get into. I, the, the, the barrel one, I, I, didn't make, I couldn't get off that one. Yeah, so this is, a, again, another select the body part type game. Uh, a body part will highlight. It will, you know... You know, you select it, and there is um, a rhythm to it because you'll I hit it. The, I thought this one was one where you had to waggle the stick. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but there's no. You don't select the body part. No, you, you, you still select the body part to actually do the swing. Oh yeah, but that's but yeah, but you have to. It's a waggle. Yeah, and you. It's a bit of a rhythm one too because you bring the hammer down, and no matter what, the first time you do it, you only will go up. Like an eighth of the way, it, you never, you're never going to ring the bell every time. 
So then you waggle and you select the buddy part again. He'll he'll hit it again and it'll go up maybe halfway. Um, you do it three times and however far up the scale you get is how many points you get. And then you go on to the next event. I believe the next event is sumo wrestling, correct? That's right, yes. And I have no idea how this works. I've seen it. So according to the documentation, I'll read the docs here. It says, Jeff must try and push his opponent out of the ring inside a qualifying time. To do this uh, involves timing and quick reactions. You must try to push the joystick to the right just before the two wrestlers move onto the screen. If you time this movement correctly, Jeff will push his opponent back one step. If you do not, Jeff will be pushed back. So there you go. So I know you're probably thinking to yourself, this sounds, you know, and, and it, it's it's laid out like track event type game or track and field type games where you play a mini game, you go on to the next one, play a mini game, go on to the next one. Why do we struggle so much with this? Now, I don't know about you, Aaron. Yeah. But the controls in this are garbage. What do you mean moving the when they... moving the cursor around is slow, it's lagged, it takes double key presses out the wazoo. Holy crap, how did they screw this up? I didn't think it was that off. It was really bad. I... Considering what they had to do, it was literally up, down, left, right, move a cursor. I double click things all the time. All the time. Well, they, this is one of those games where, uh, where the, uh, the the controls are a part of the game, but I didn't find the controls to be that challenging. If I'm honest, I I thought they were very laggy. I thought they were incredibly laggy. I, I think that also when the axe head is moving back and forth, the the visual part of that is fine, but I felt like I would hit my button. And then the axe would slide into whatever the next groove was. Because, it, it, of course, you know, it can't just hit analog across the log. It, it has grooves. But I'd hit a button. It would always skip where I was, slide into the next one, and then go down. And it was so infuriating. I, I, I mean, I, I want to like this game. I really do. But I, and the, the graphics are fine. They're not great, but they're fine. You you, you get the point across. You understand yeah. what everything is supposed to represent. The music is is beeps and boops, but they do make songs. Well, no, they they uh, it's got actual multi-channel music in it. I mean, it's like for example, one of my favorite bits is during the during the uh, log chopping. It plays out the I'm a lumberjack. lumberjack song, yeah, but it's funny. But it's good choice. But it, it's still it's very. I mean, for the rudimentary. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's just fine. <laughs> it, it, it is. It's fine, but it's still very rudimentary. Um, but the all of that's fine. But I had such problems with the controls. And it wasn't that I didn't understand the controls, because it's literally, it's up, down, left, right, and a button for the actual moving the cursor around. But I had a lot of lag with it. I, it just felt weird to me. I don't know. I didn't have. I didn't really feel like it was that bad. So why did okay then? And not really. this is this isn't an attack. But why did you lose? Well, most of the time, I, I, the worst event is the log event. Yeah. No, definitely. And so of all the events, that's the one I lost on the most because that's the one event. Where I mean, I got better at that event as I played, but it, I still never got great at it. It's just one of those events. It reminds me of taking off a rocket ranger. Just when you think you got it, you don't got it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, so that's an event I struggled with. Like I said, if you watch that online, it seems like the easiest event when you watch the video. But it's the hardest event to me because it's the it's it's hard. The time limit's tight. It uh, is. And I, again, with using the effort buttons. Uh, they may make a difference, but I'm not sure. But any way it goes, that makes it harder too, because you're that game. That game requires split second timing. The rest of the games, like I said, the bear. I would have gotten past the barrel one the first time. It was my best run, the, where you put the barrels in the back of the truck. But I didn't understand the rules of it. And the second time I got there, uh, I just couldn't quite get into the rhythm. I got there like three times. I never could get past it. The rest of the events I got past pretty easily. I like the idea. It's this is a game where I, they thought outside the box, especially for a game like this because this is this is a six event game. It's a single load game, you know. So you're on load one time, and the events are strongman events, and they do try to in integrate some of the more fun aspects uh, of of 
or the background aspects of being a straw man with the muscles yes. working out. That's kind of fun. You know, I, I, and it's, I think a concept like a straw man, they can actually make a modern game of this and do a lot of neat stuff, include like injuries to make some of the mini games harder, stuff like that. Like this would be, this is one that's like untapped, I think, if you ask me. I don't know if anybody buy it. But in terms of this one, like I did have every, don't get me wrong, when you're playing that Simon game, you're trying to click on the right button group, it can get, it can get a little dicey. But for the most part, I was pretty good at that part of the game. It was the, the log part that gave me the most trouble. Oh, the log part was infuriating. It was infuriating. Yeah. Um, and it was, like I said, I only got past it once. Yeah. One time. Uh, it was, <laughs> I'm sure if I, it, I will never sit down for an hour and play this game. Ever again. Really? I no. Kinda, I kind of like this. Because, well, I, I loved the concept. I love what I'm seeing, right? But the if the log event was last and I could build up to it every yeah. time, I'd have a lot more fun. But all I'm doing is I start the game, I put stuff in my muscles. Yeah. <laughs> That's called steroids. <laughs> I, I do the car event, I fail at the log. Yeah. I start the game, I put stuff in my muscles. It's literally that loop over and over and over. Yeah. That's I mean that's, and and that's takes the a, problem. And yeah. it takes a minute and a half to fail at the log thing, even though you're trying the whole time. And one of the bad parts about this being not being a multi-load game is like in a multi-load game, at least you could try the other events. They wouldn't get boring. But I couldn't find a cheat no. to get past the like I was like, I'll just skip to the I couldn't find yeah. one. It, it so is I was stuck playing those events over and over. And the events like you're thinking, you say, well, I just tried on the answer. They have different events. Yeah, over there, whole so different I game. You know, I don't think any of the other ones have that log game. I'm not 100 sure, but I mean, it's, boy, what an exclusive to get. And the thing is, even that's not that bad. If it was just, if the log wasn't as big or something, it would be better. Or your chops went farther through. Yeah, yeah. Something else this doesn't have. If you watch the video, it's like when you finish the round of all the events. Like that's when you should have like the medal ceremony or get a trophy. No, you just start no the extras. over. Yeah, you know. So I mean, it's pretty bare bones. I think the loading screen looks pretty good. It's it does a accurate portrayal of the man. You know, and I think this game got a lot of stuff right. This reminds me a lot of the boxing game we played that everybody hated, but I didn't hate. Like it's a little bit better than that. They'll punch out. It's a lot. No, this is a lot better than that. I, that game was horrible. I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, but uh, I, 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 this game's oh, close to being a really good game, but I would call it a mediocre game, you know. For so uh, you're paying full price for a mediocre game. And, well, you're playing eight bucks. Yeah, but that's they said that's full price for. Oh, like, that was full price back, back in the day. Yeah. Wow. So that's wow. No, don't see that. Nope. Nope. Man, I wish we had games back in the day that you could get for like a ten a tenner. We never, we never had any well, of that. You, you or can, buy you any can, games anywhere. You can do it now. Yeah, I'm talking back when we were, but back when the uh, we had a Coco. Oh, we no. talked about this before. There was no budget <laughs> no. releases for the Coco. There were no releases for the Coco. And they were, when you bought one, you paid the big money. So yeah, yeah. so but yeah, I would have killed for this. But yeah, so it's something to consider. Um, we did get uh, some reviews on this, Brent. If you were interested in hearing what they, I am. What the people? I'm wondering if anyone else had problems with the controls beside me. Let's start off with uh, Jed Byrne. He writes in and says, I remember as a teenager taking regular trips to a small engineering firm who did computer repairs. I would have to hand over my beloved computer for four days so the torn keyboard membrane could be replaced. Now, why did my membranes need to be replaced so frequently? Because of games like this. Button mashes where you had to hit the keys as fast as possible to make a little bar move. I played the great licenses of this type, dailies, decathlon, hypersports, Jeff Capes, is an obscure license, but the gameplay is the same. Furiously smash that keyboard until you reach the end. Just in case that isn't frustrating enough, they've also added a game of whack-a-mole where random muscle groups are highlighted and you have to use the bizarre keyboard layout to move it as quickly as possible. Just in case that isn't infuriating enough, simple little tunes barble along while you play. Surely by 1985, we figured out that the continuous tune was a bad idea, and that the keys uh, need to be redefinable. That's true. This does not have redefinable no. keys. After a couple hours of play, I'm deleting this file from a drive for the sake of my sanity and the keyboard. So I don't think he was a fan of that. <laughs> uh, Thingley chimes in. 
On my first go, the most technically impressive thing about this game was probably the 48k beeper music, which can't be it can't be turned off. The main graphics for the mini games are basic with not much animation. The area I was moving around was a bit slow to control. Thank you. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that's what I said. It somehow pulled me in though. After a few goes, I started to get further each time. The effort slider is a good risk reward mechanic. Which helps smooth the difficulty out when you're learning a new event or going for a better score at an old one. Amazingly, there are no events in this game that I just suck at. Almost every multi sports game this year I've ever played has that one event from hell that I don't improve at and, can, and can't consistently beat. It's just not here, though. It's almost like they've forgotten to include it. But only six simple mini games and no multiplayer slash metal table modes. This probably wasn't good value at full price. But if I'd bought the later budget release, I'd been happy with the few hours I got out of this. Not a classic, but okay for what it is. 7 out of 10. Uh, I looked up some magazine reviews on this that were uh, contemporaneous with its release. Crash 24 gave this a big 78%. Uh, Sinclair User gave this 3 out of 5. Uh, Your Sinclair gave it 7 out of 10. ZX Computing gave it 4 out of 5. ASM gave it 93%. So I That's call, insane. I would call those pretty good reviews. I would I would not call this a upper tier game. In fact, I would probably call this a slightly above average game with a very good premise. Uh, and it's one that I could get into. I just wish they would have made a few simple changes to make it a little more fun for me. And also, retardable keyboard, that's a must. He's not wrong there. Yeah. I did enjoy the little tunes because so many Spectre games are silent. So it was. Not, I thought it was pleasant to have a little tune playing in the background. It made it more festive, uh, which are what the world's strongest man competitions generally are, a big festival. Right. Um, lastly, I did look this up on the eBay uh, brand, in case you're interested. All right. And these things are available all day long. Yeah. You won't be paying £7.95p anymore. You can get these uh, for as little as a couple U.S. dollars, all up to about five, six bucks. Take the thing home. I checked my... Uh, what I would consider a, 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 a large collection of ZX tapes, but this is not amongst it, oh. unfortunately. So I may have to drop a couple bucks, pick this one up, just because I'm a big, I, I, I've become a Jeff Cape fan. I enjoyed this quite a bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to give this a, a, a moderate review in this case, but you, you're going to pan it, I guess. Now I'm going to go a little bit lower. I, I think having what was obviously the hardest mini game as the second event, no, it had absolutely no options. It had no extras at all. It was start the game, play the game, lose at the game, do it all again. Yeah. Yeah, a little more effort would have been appreciated. I don't think what was there was bad, but I think they could have done a little bit more. I will say, I, I did get great at the first event. It's hard not <laughs> to. <laughs> because I played it 400 million times. So I got quite good at it, Brent. So there you go. That was Jeff Capes. Strong man. I enjoyed it. I think everyone should have a, a, at least one go at it. So let's talk about what we're going to be playing the next time around. Aura Sinclair here in a few weeks. The people have spoken, Brent. You know, I, I have mixed feelings on this because we sort of covered this game back in the day on the Apple. But we're going to give it a shot. We've never played on the ZX. So we're giving it a shot. And God knows we love the content of this one. Our next game will be the Rocky Horror Picture Show Yep, on the ZX Spectrum. And I recall liking it on the, uh, on the uh, what do we put it on, the Apple? I believe it was. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. We will do the time warp again. We'll see. You know, we're going to do that. <laughs> well, we might do it again. But next week, Aaron. Yes, sir. On ARG Presents, we'll be playing games with characters, character art, yeah. character-based games. This is your ANSI callback, Aaron. I've actually already picked my game. Oh, by the oh. way, if, if, if you're interested, I'm not. So uh, I got a. This is a tip from a from a listener uh, who uh, who has tipped me off, and I'm like, you. That's a good choice. I'm going to be. I've already got mine included. I'll I'll reveal said game next week. Uh, so coming up, well, or, yeah, next Wednesday. Yeah, next week we'll be we'll be filming the game. Aaron. Right, no, that's true. <laughs> um, of course, we'll be back with uh, uh, ARG next week, and in two weeks, we'll be uh, cranking out a Coco show. Cool. That, should, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Brent, yes. as we bring this thing to the close here, uh, let's have a quick 
uh, uh, go around of what we need to talk about here before we shut her down. Because in less than a week uh, from the release of this show, we'll be back. It's all going to go down at the International Computer Club, uh, where luminaries from across the world gather in our Discord. And, and, and we have a lovely computer club setting where we have demonstrations, videos, and people uh, talking about various products, various projects. Maybe we'll see a game room tour. Maybe we'll see a book review. You never know what you're going to get at the International Computer Club. I can tell you, we've already got uh, six or seven people lined up. Nice. And at least one or two more are in the kitty. So I'd say we're going to come out of this with a real hefty lineup. We usually try to get these in in under three hours. We've never successfully done it. Uh, this all will go down Saturday, April 20th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, in case you're not familiar with the whole concept, uh, we all get together in our Discord and we uh, broadcast this to Twitch, to YouTube, simulcast. If you're interested in doing something at the uh, event, there is a pinned document in the uh, Internet Computer Club section of our Discord. If you're interested in just showing up and just hanging out, but not actually doing and demonstrating, you can just show up into the, in the Discord chat and just log in. If you want to just watch uh, and chat with your fellow uh, computer enthusiasts, you can just log into Twitch or log into YouTube at the appropriate hour, just like you're doing right now, and fire that sucker up, and we'll be broadcasting it. And then we'll, of course, put it on YouTube after it's all said and done. Yep, yep. It'll be a good time, uh, and everyone uh, is uh, invited. Uh, next, uh, ending in just uh, about uh, two weeks, is the uh, Amigo Aaron's Pod Jam 2024. This is where you are invited to uh, send in a podcast. Everyone's got one podcast in them, the brand, and even you. And if you've got one podcast in you, this is a great opportunity to, to get your podcast heard by a lot of people right, right at once, right out of the gate. Don't don't wallow in obscurity. Get your podcast out there immediately. Plus, you can win uh, fabulous prizes provided by RetroRewind.ca, uh, where he's giving away uh, gift certificates for top three uh, places. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, submit uh, your show. It's uh, over at uh, Twitch.io, or excuse me, it was uh, help me, Itch.io, uh, the Pod Jam. Just look up, just look up uh, Pod Jam 2024. It'll come right up. Uh, we'd love to have you in there. There's also a pod jam area in the Discord. Uh, check there for information. Yep. I think that's all we got to, Brent. I agree. Let's take it to the house. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Go out, get your workout on, get your burn on, and start turning over cars. And we'll see you next week. And until then, rewind tape. Hey, Brent! Oh! <laughs>